Hey everyone, welcome back to Paw Paw's Workshop. Today's video is all about the new Sculfin SF A9 laser. Now this is a 40 watt laser and also at the flip of a switch, you can change this to a 20 watt laser. Either way, this is an outstanding value. I'm gonna show you how to assemble it today and quite frankly, it's gonna take less than about 10 minutes to assemble this and get it ready for the first engraving. I'm so excited. The Sculfin SF A9 has finally arrived. This is a 20 watt and at the flick of a switch, a 40 watt laser engraver. The nice thing about this laser is it is almost completely assembled right out of the box. Now you have a couple pieces of the Tefts wood and the aluminum sheet to be able to put down as a protection for your uh, tabletop. But look at the laser itself. It is almost fully assembled. The total time to assemble this laser is less than 15 minutes. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and just how simple it is. And then we're going to use the Lightburn software and do our first test engrave. And the funny part about this is it's actually going to take longer to get all the different items out of this box than it is to assemble this laser engraver. It is absolutely amazing. And it comes complete with the air pump. It has the legs and the extension legs so that you can easily attach a rotary roller with this machine. You also get the glasses that come with this. Now if you're brand new to the laser engraving, you must wear the safety glasses anytime that the laser is operating. Even though that this laser does have a shield on the base of it when it's cutting, you still need to have the glasses. You even get all of the different cables that you need, including the USB cable to connect this laser engraver to your computer. And of course you have the power supply here to be able to plug it in. You literally don't need anything else to be able to get started engraving. This is a gantry for the laser itself. And again, it is pre-assembled, pre-wired. Everything is attached and ready to go. There is no additional wiring that is necessary for this. You also have the hoses that goes to the air pump that's all ready to, to be plugged in. Also notice just how well that this whole entire laser is packaged. I want to take out the laser head itself and show this to you. On the laser head you have this indication right here with this little switch. So you have a 20 watt and a 40 watt available right at the flip of the switch. You also have the height adjustment right here. Just flip that down, set the height of the laser, and then flip it back up and you're ready to go. The shield is built in. You also have a gauge over here in centimeters and this is a dovetail type of connection. To assemble the gantry, all it takes are these little screws right here. There's four of them, two on each side. You just drop the gantry in place. You have the screw that will just screw right in to the pre-drilled and tapped hole. Grab the second screw, put it in the same way, and you're almost finished with the assembly of this laser engraver. As always, I'll always put the screws in loose to begin with, and then I come back and tighten each one of them. Moving to the other side, the alignment's already just about perfect. And I can start and put that first screw in on this side of the gantry, screw it in, add the second screw, put it in place, and I'll tighten up both of these screws and the gantry installation is completed. Next, lift up the machine and you're going to stand it up on its edge. You're looking at the bottom of the machine. This is where I'm going to add the legs. Again, the holes are pre-drilled, pre-tapped, and all you need to do is just screw the legs on. How easy is that? Now the other thing that I do, all of the screws in this machine, I do test and make sure that they are tight because in shipping you do have the possibility of the various screws to come loose. In my case, as I went through and checked the tightness of each of the screws on the laser, every single one of them was completely tight and I didn't have to do anything else. So far, I think I have about three minutes worth of assembly time on this laser. <laughs> That's not bad. You do have the Wi-Fi capability with this laser and this is the antenna that is installed right here at the bottom of the controller itself. Again, you're looking at the bottom of the laser itself. Now I'm going to tighten this antenna on and have it secure 
but in this video we're not going to be utilizing the Wi-Fi to be able to operate this laser. Next, it's time to install the laser head itself. Now remember, this is a dovetail type connection. So literally all it needs to do is just slide right down into that dovetail and then you can use this little red handle right here and lock it in place. And that is the lation is done. <laughs> that's pretty simple. The air hose attaches right here to the connector that's already pre-installed. The cables itself are already pre-installed, pre-wired, there's nothing else to do. You have two connectors that attach to the laser itself. Both of them are a different size and they're color coded. So that makes it even easier. All you need to do is literally plug it in. And just like that, that one is done. Now this one, being a little small connector, but it's a little bit harder for my big fat fingers to be able to put it in. So I use a little bit of an aid to help me out with that. I grabbed the needle nose pair of pliers so I could hold on to the little connector and then I could have it where I could just, again, plug it right in to the slot. I showed this little foot earlier to be able to have the laser set at the proper height. Just flip this down so it will actually touch the material that you're going to be engraving. When you loosen that red knob, you're able to slide the laser down until it touches the material. And once that little foot touches the material, then all you need to do is just turn the red knob again to tighten it back in place. And don't forget, raise up that little foot. And the laser now is set at the proper height and you're ready to actually engrave. On the other side of the laser head, you have a scale that's actually graduated in the millimeters. And also, on the back of the laser head, you have this little knob right here. By turning this left or right, you can go up or down. So if you're trying to cut some very thick material, you want to set the height, as I showed you a moment ago, and then lower the laser down one to about three millimeters, depending on the thickness of the wood, which will give you a better cut through the thick material. Looking at the front of the laser head, you can see that little switch right here. So you can switch between the 20 watt and a 40 watt setting. And of course this light will light up so you know exactly which setting just you have the laser set on. The air pump is included in this package and all you need to do is literally plug in this hose and that is it. The other end as far as the power source will plug in to the control panel itself. To power the laser you have this connector that plugs into this bottom uh, connector and then of course that goes over to your AC-DC adapter. The last cable is the USB cable with that connector right there and of course the cable is provided in this kit. So you just simply plug that in and then you can attach that to the computer. Of course the next step plug in the power cord to the AC-DC adapter and then you can plug it in to any convenient outlet. This is the emergency stop button. More than likely in shipping this is going to be depressed. If this is pushed down, the machine will not operate. You need to twist this in the direction of the arrow, which is clockwise, and you'll see it pop up. Once it pops up, then you're ready to operate the machine. Now this machine also has an off and on with a key. And that's actually a nice feature, especially if you have small kids that come into the shop. There's one more small step that I want to be able to show you. This is the little clamp that holds the cables in position. It just takes one little screw and again is pre-drilled and tapped so all you do line up that little uh, bracket and screw it in. Now there's one for this cable and there's also one for the air hose. This air hose is actually attached on the front side of the laser head itself. Just clip it over the hose and then just slip your screw in. I find that's the easiest way to do it and then you can just put it right in the pre-drilled and tapped uh, hole and screw it in position. Now one thing I did find useful is to use my own tool which had a longer uh, handle to be able to screw it in. The time has come to be able to turn on the machine. So I turn the key into the on position and then right next to that you have this button which is an off and on button. I'll depress that, the light comes on, the laser is activated and I have it set for the 20 watt setting. Also you hear the uh, air pump in the background. All of that starts with the push of that button. 
Right above the 20 watt, you see the green light. That indicates that we're operating on the 20 watt laser side. If I flip that switch, we will be switching over to the 40 watt side. I also plugged in the USB cable into my computer, turned on the computer, and I'm going to open up the Lightburn software. This takes just a couple of minutes to be able to load. As Lightburn turned on and I had the machine on, it had the automatic home feature already activated. So it went to the home position. So that's the X, Y, uh, zero position. At this point, I can use the Lightburn software to move this in any direction that I wish. By selecting the move tab, I now have access to this and I can move this and this is set to move at one inch increments. And I can, of course, change this to anything that I want. If I wanna put this at, let's just say two inches for an example, I can do that. And then I can move this at two inches. Let me show you over on the machine. So you can see how that's moving at two inches at a time. And it's extremely quiet. If you choose not to have this automatic home when you turn the machine on, there is a setting in Lightburn to be able to turn that off. Now to be able to do the first engrave with this, I want you to be aware, I do have the devices that selected with the Sculpin, and this will work just fine. I'm not gonna add anything else at this point. I wanna come down to the art library, and I have the logos, and I'm going to select the Sculpin logo right there. And this is the A9. I'm gonna change that. So I'll highlight the text right there, and I can come over now and back this out and type in the A. And now I have the Sculpin A9, which is the new model that we have. And I can even put in the SF and my dash. Now we'll leave that out just like that. And now I have this all set. I'll come back up to this tab. Now I change this to a fill instead of the line and I don't like how the logo is right next to that S. So I can actually highlight this and be able to move that over just a little bit. So I'll click on the left mouse and I can just hold that down and drag that over just a little bit and that looks a whole lot better. I have just a basic setting in right now to be able to do this first engrave. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to use the test grid to be able to test out all the different uh, settings to be able to find out the best settings to be able to engrave or cut out the material. So I have this now set. I have the power setting that I want to have in here to do this first test. And the next thing I want to do is frame this. Okay, let's grab the glasses and engrave this. Okay, I hit start and it begins to do the engraving. The air pump turns on and it'll go through the engraving process. This will take just a couple minutes to do and I'll show you the finished result when it's all done. Now it's about halfway finished and it's actually engraving a little bit deeper than what I would like. But again, this was just a test setting that I put in without running a test grid first. Now it's looking amazing at this point. I can't wait to be able to do more and more projects with this laser. So until next time, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. So for now, bye-bye. See you real soon.